had a power outage the other day and my refrigerator isn't working anymore. I'm sure it's related. Video is for general information only, not advice. By continuing, you agree you have read the warnings and release all liability. And here is the model number. It's a double door freezer on the bottom. It has power to the fridge, but the display panel is not working. Really. And the compressor is not running and there is no clicking as some people's videos indicate from the relay, which is somewhere in there. Make sure you unplug the power. So this is what looks like on the back all the way across in order. If anybody's looking to find a video that has the same components in order as mine, I felt like this was tricky because I had all this extra wires, which as it turns out, looks like it's just ground wires from the power there. But when you move them out of the way, again, make sure you unplug your refrigerator. There's really only just a couple of wires there. And then if you can see this little metal piece, it's just a bracket that's holding that on. So the other ones I've seen are left to right or non-existent. So if you have one like this, the same thing. Just pull the top up. I'm just reaching in over my compressor because it's easier and lift that, just lift that little wire up. The whole thing will just drop off. And so what I'm gonna do next is just stick a screwdriver right in between the those two pieces and carefully turn it back and forth to get this black piece to slide off in that direction. Here we go. Carefully wiggle it in there. You can see it start to separate. You might be able to do this with your hands alone. There we go. I felt it slip. Make sure it comes straight out. I think I can get it with my hand now. There we go. Came straight out of there. And these, this is what it looks like. I can, from all angles, I find it's helpful to get it off if you know what it looks like. Now I'm going to try to take this white piece off. And I have. The other videos I watched said to be careful not to twist it or turn it because there's these prongs on the compressor that poke out like, and you don't want to break those. So it's coming off in the same direction. I'm having a little trouble with it. I'm gonna try the screwdriver and do it the same way I did the other one. It seemed to work pretty well. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. It just slips right off of there. Without any trouble. Look at smile. So note that the single hole there is on the bottom and not the top. Some of them are the other way around. That's what that looks like. And there are the pins. for you. There are the pins, how they stick out from the compressor or whatever you call them. So I'm told if you shake this and it's noisy, you have a problem. Mine's not really that noisy, so I'm not really sure if this is going to be it, but we're going to find out for 10 bucks. Make sure you remember which way the wires are going into this. My wire just slipped right off of there. It wasn't clamped at all, which makes me wonder if there wasn't a good connection. But, like I said, for $10, I'm going to go ahead and replace this anyway. And looks like somebody has already done that once. So, I bought this refrigerator used. There's a electrical tape there. And there. And I'm to this point. Here's a part number that was on my relay or whatever it's called, I'm no mechanic, but um, 
Let me see if I can pull this out of here with one hand. So you can just see that it pulls straight up. Yep. So there's the other one. So here are the pieces I'm going to take to my appliance parts store. And this really took me less than 10 minutes. So, and that includes pushing out the refrigerator from the wall and unplugging it. So in case this becomes confusing, I want to just note that I said somebody did some work before on it, it looks like. But anybody who doesn't do a lot of this stuff should know that this wire was originally black. This one was originally blue. And whoever fixed it only had yellow and red. So you can ignore these colors and pay attention to the black and the blue when we go back to putting things together. Since I had a power surge, I thought I should probably check my outlet, make sure it's working properly. And it is. There's the key. I should have done this first, but I didn't. Okay, so I just got back from the appliance parts store. They tested this for me and they think it's okay. It had a little noise to it. And so I thought maybe, but I knew it wasn't rattling too much. So I wasn't sure. So I'm gonna put this back in just the way it came out and not make any changes to that. And they recommended, so this video is changing from replacing the relay, but at least we've done it. We know how to do it in case that becomes useful for you to replacing the board, which I've never done anything like this before. So we'll see how that goes, but it looks pretty easy considering that the directions are only two pages. This is the front side and the back side really doesn't look that complicated. So when I unpackaged it, I made sure just not to touch the parts with my fingers in case there's any oil. I don't know if that is important, but I imagine it is and no moisture is around here. So this is where we started working and the panel control board or whatever it's called should be behind this panel. Just gonna take up those three screws. So here's what it looks like behind the panel. Take a picture so you know where everything connects into. If you have the same refrigerator as me, you'll be interested to see this was just tucked in here. It's not really connected to anything, so that would have confused me later. Um, so like I said, take pictures along the way. So then remove all these from the, and they're a little, make sure you don't bend them, just pull straight out. Might take a little doing, but there, just continue. There's one more to be disconnected, I think, here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to break anything. So I finally got wise enough to look at the new board to see how that pin, how that, and you can see a little gap underneath the, so I think that blue thing has to go down first and then out. So I'm gonna try that. There we go. I'm gonna try it downward. Ooh, still not getting any. Oh, there, yep, starting to go. So this one is removed by pushing downward, I think. A little challenging. I might have to wait till I pull the board out and then get this one off because the wires are having trouble getting down any further. So a little side note, I noticed that my new board has this ground wire here and my old board does not, which might explain why my 
The board burned out during the power out. Okay, so I didn't know how to remove the board, but I could see there's this little tab here, right there, sticking out, that I knew I couldn't pull the board off. So I just thought I would push this tab in. Hard to do with one hand on the phone. Well, I did do it so on So as it turns out, you just push the tab in and pull the board as you're pushing the tab in. It shouldn't uh, stay in. And then, so these two, just push the tab and pull it out a little, but it's also connected. So those were up here. And there's also two right there and there. And here's what it looks like behind. And be careful when you're pushing these tabs in because the very first one I thought it stays in because it, I think I broke it. So all you need to do is just push it in and then wiggle the board off of it and let it fall back into place. And the last connection is this light blue one and it did slide, it was this way, it does slide straight down and the wire harness was just too close to the edge for me to get it off. So there it is. And now the board is free. And you're bored. Now the appliance parts store said you could look behind it and see if it had any burn marks and I don't really see anything except that tiny little spot so if that is enough for it to be burned out then you know to look for just something just that itty bitty okay I got to something confusing on this step of the instructions and it says to eliminate this wire in pin 2 of the J1 connector so it looks like right in that nine pin connector, the second one, second wire and they want you to cut. I was freaking out a little bit about that until I realized that my current nine pin connector doesn't even have a wire in that. So that's already probably been done for me. You may want to check okay, that. So I'm going to start reconnecting all of these to this, which is gonna to be too difficult to hold and do the same thing, but I wanted to just say a little reminder to do that light blue one first because there wasn't much room for it otherwise. I've lined up these pins again and got them all through there. I don't know if you're gonna hear an audible click, but yep. So, pressing those in. This one I broke, so hopefully that doesn't cause a problem, but I may just put a little piece of plastic through there. I think it's okay. It seems to be seated pretty well, so I'll just leave it alone. Okay, putting the panel back on, you just wanna make sure that ground wire there, oops, sorry. The ground wire there goes through the screw on the back. No fun one. Here. Tucked the wires and put the panel back on. Now, gotta replace my relay switch. But there was nothing wrong okay. with it. Red was on the bottom. Yellow on the top. Line up those three pins it straight on. Replace the clip. Wire. Now for the test, I'm gonna surge protector next time. We have noise. So the refrigerator is cooling, but my display panel is still not lit up, so I don't know if that's going to take some time or if I didn't connect something properly. Next part of the process. Make sure you unplug the power line. So my refrigerator is cooling now, so I'm super happy about that, but still my temperature display is not working, so I'm going to take this apart. Okay. As stupid is as stupid does, ma'am. I think that the reason why my temperature display wasn't displaying was because this piece that I talked about earlier that I thought was tucked here was probably always plugged in and this 
was the piece. Same color wires. But this portion was tucked underneath. So I'm going to put it back together, and I have a feeling everything's going to work. But because I already took apart the display inside the refrigerator, and I couldn't find any videos about that, I'm going to show you how I did added bonus. Whoop. This piece, I had a hard time figuring out how to get it down. So I'm going to show you backwards how it's put back together. And if you're interested in what's behind here, I thought this was what might be wrong. The, temp the display board, but now I don't think it is. Let's see if there's a part. Number right there in case we need it later. Basically, what's holding this temperature control panel in place in the back is just a couple little tabs that you can slide this forward and remove. It will push back as you're putting it back together, which we are. And then there are just two screws to put it back in, which I'm going to have to show you. And that's not it. And that's not the screw hole like I thought. Earlier. Okay, this is probably obvious to everyone except for me, but... Maybe not, maybe you need help with this too. I didn't know how to get this light panel off, so basically just reach your hand around, pull towards you at the bottom edge of it and down. And that just comes right out of there. And then you can get to this two screws that are there. Oop. So it's not been quite 24 hours. And we have ice. And our temperature is almost back to normal. I hope my first video has been of some use to you. Obviously, I'm rewarding my success with an ice cold 